Hey you guys, welcome back. So it's been around a year since I put out my original Millsbo video, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to give you guys an update on how my Millsbo's are doing. So I have changed these up so many times since I've got them. I feel like I'm constantly moving stuff in, out, things are outgrowing it, I'm getting new plants, moving different things around. Um, I'm, they're definitely always, always changing, and I love that for these. They're such a good little environment for growth that things outgrow them easily, which is a great thing. So they've definitely helped contribute to plants that are now living in other areas of my home. And I will put out a video on how to move plants out successfully. But uh, currently we're sitting next to my wide mills bow, which is kind of acting like mostly an anthurium cabinet. I have big anthurium dreams. So a few updates and things that I have changed along the way are what I kind of wanted to go over rather than just plants, because we all have our favorite plants. Um, one of my favorites is totally different anthurium. So that's what this one's mostly dedicated to. I have a huge plan of having like a wall of them, but everybody needs to grow a little bit before I can create my vision. So we'll see. But a few major updates I made. Number one update. And you may have seen other people talk about these already. They're definitely becoming really popular. You may notice that my old greenhouse had pink lights. I'll post a picture. And now you can see it's definitely more true colored in there. And that is because of the new grow lights that I've got in this wide mills bow. I have this Plant Spectrum 32 by Mother. I'll be linking all of this down below. These are beautiful grow lights. So this is what Mother refers to as an unseen spectrum. So it took them five years to develop these lights in a way that it actually shows the plants as real sunlight would show them. The lights help your plants develop the perfect true color that they should be, as well as the perfect taste if you're growing edible plants on top of just providing awesome growth. The other thing I love about this company is that they're environmentally conscious. So if those LED strips inside the lights run out, uh, it takes around eight years or 50,000 light hours. You can easily just slide out the LED board and slide in a new one and you keep your original casing. So that makes it cheaper to replace and means that you're wasting less. They also offer a four year warranty if anything goes wrong on the lights. And four years is awesome. So I have noticed in other light brands, specifically cheaper ones that I've bought over the years, after a year of daily use, I can actually tell that they're starting to get a little weaker. So investing in some good grow lights like these with that four year warranty is awesome. Because if you were to notice after a year that things are starting to not look like they're functioning, uh, you can reach out and utilize that warranty. I think that the cause of other LEDs starting to dull early in their life expectancy is due to heat. So a uh, mother on their website explains that heat can damage those LED boards. So their entire housing for the light, as well as even the attachments are meant to distribute heat away from the LEDs to help your LED last as long as possible. They also have all kinds of mounts available, which was awesome. So mine are fixed on the roof with like, I'll put a picture here of how they're fixed up with these specific mounts but there's also standing mounts. Uh, there's a really cool mount that's like, makes it stand upright. They're really, really attractive, high quality looking lights. So I love the idea of popping some of those around the home. They just look like a modern light fixture, honestly. So they're really, really nice. And the nice thing about having so many different mounts is that no matter what, you can always utilize these lights. So a good example, I pop my Fiat lights out of here and those Fiat lights, you can't really use anywhere else. So it was just, now I just had Fiat lights kicking around, but these, I could very easily use them in my home attractively. So that's a huge upsell for me. They're just, they're phenomenal lights. They had also mentioned something about waterproof. So these lights work great. Um, they're both fine for the uh, humidity levels that my greenhouses sit at. But if you actually grow plants in like a water enclosure, which I know some of you do, I believe that they're making some of these waterproof as well. Or they already are, let's, yes, yes. The Plant Spectrum 32 is indeed waterproof. So that's awesome. 
In my wide Mills bow, I use the Plant Spectrum 32. It's just, I believe it's 32 inches long. It's, it's the long one. And in the Mills bow, I use two of the Plant Spectrum 16s. So they're a little more stout and I just use one on each level. So thank you so much, Mother, for reaching out to me and hooking me up with some awesome lights. They've also been super nice to offer all the Planterior viewers a discount code. So I will leave that in the description box down below for you guys to check out. So that's totally my one of my favorite changes. I do still love the Fiat Grow lights were good and the price was cheap, which was good. Like I said, after a year, they were starting to look dull. Um, as well as they did have that pink glow to them, which I still don't mind. I still kind of like the slight pink. It's not like Amsterdam red light district pink. It is a gentle warm pink. So I was okay with it, but uh, it is really nice to know now that I've got some real quality lights that will last in these beautiful greenhouses. The next big change that I made, and this might surprise some people because this was kind of my staple for my original Ikea greenhouse, but I don't have a fountain in either of them anymore. And I have a reason. So aesthetically, I love the fountain. Keep the fountain for aesthetics. It's beautiful. Um, but the reason I removed it is because I jam packed this thing with plants. And that's kind of the main reason. <laughs> um, it was just strictly a space saving measure. So while I do love a fountain and I love the aesthetics it gives and how beautiful it makes it, um, my humidity stays over 80% just based on how packed this greenhouse is with plants with no added humidity. Uh, so right now it's actually at 83%. And that's a question I get a lot while people are building their greenhouses is why is my greenhouse not keeping humidity? And the fix is the best solution ever. You just add more plants and then you're set. So that is the solution. Low humidity, get more plants. I don't think any of us will have too much of an issue with that. But um, the plants themselves keep the humidity up. If anyone wants to know the reason, it's because they transpire. So the moisture of coming off the leaves, as well as when you water all the soil, that's a bunch of damp soil sitting in there. Just radiating humidity so it does a fine job with no additive maintaining humidity if you properly weatherproof you can see my weatherproofing in there um before we move on one more thing about humidity people have been having issues with the pegboard molding if you have strong fans so good air circulation you can never have too much air circulation crank those fans up and just let them blow everything around that that's the best Additionally, not letting your humidity get too high. So I will say I've never had a pegboard mold ever and I still have my original pegboards in. But what I did have is I noticed that this wide mills bow where I used to have it near a south window, the sun coming in caused it to cook like crazy in there. So the heat would get really high and the humidity would get super high because the plants were trying to transpire more to cool down. And when I would open that one, you could smell that the air felt muggy. So I think that that is something else to consider is that if your greenhouse is in the sun, then you'll be having higher humidity as well. So just keep an eye on that. You can seal these pegboards. And I believe Ikea, I saw they have a new clear one. I don't know if it's plastic, but it kind of looks like it. Um, but yeah, plastic again is always a safe bet also, or a metal grid I've seen people do. These pegboards that I use from Ikea are susceptible to mold if your uh, humidity is going to be up, up, up. Okay, now another huge thing. Um, so plants all grouped together, tons of plants, usually kind of small plants too. Most of mine are in like three and a half, four inch pots. So tons of plants grouped together, leaves touching. What are we thinking? Bugs. So while the environment in there is perfect for plants, it is also unfortunately perfect for pests. So um, that is also one of the things that I wanted to discuss is pest management. Hauling all the plants out, spraying them down, wiping them off once a month is not really that simple because there's so many plants in these. So I use beneficial bugs and predator mites. I release predator mites around four times a year, just kind of evenly spaced out just as a preventative. 
I personally, predator mites are a little bit more money, but I prefer to know that I'm not spraying neem oil and fogging myself out. I've got tons of allergies. I prefer to just pay the extra money, let the beneficial bugs and predator mites do their thing, eat all the thrips or whatever issue there may be at the time and not have to stress on it. Um, I do have another video filmed to update on my predator mites, beneficial bugs. Um, it should be out later this week if I haven't already posted it. Uh, once it's posted, I will link it in the description box down below so you can check that out. Now, the next thing is outgrowing this greenhouse. So um, I had an albo in there. It's huge now, it's like four feet tall. Um, I had, what else have I had in there? A tie, I had um, my gloriosum. Everything has so far outgrown this greenhouse. Like there's not a hope of those things living in here at this point. And that's kind of what we were all aiming for though, right? <laughs> Was giving our plants the perfect environment to grow and look beautiful for us. This is kind of like the incubator for my living room. They get to live in here in my office and then they graduate and grow up to live in the living room. And exploding growth is something that you can definitely expect once you pop plants in these greenhouses. The conditions are so awesome. The lights are incredible. Uh, they're, give, they're so close, giving your plants exactly what they need. Add some fertilizer to the mix and like, you're gonna be giving haircuts all the time. So that's kind of my other tip. Just constantly give haircuts, um, make cuttings, toss them in your propagation box and start anew. Uh, my other cabinet, I can't wait to show you. I've been propagating a ton of Hoyas to create like waterfalls of the same Hoya. And uh, it's so exciting because my a few of them I started with just like a few leaves and now I have like four or five or more plants. So it's amazing. I love these greenhouses so much. And before I walk you through these greenhouses really quick, uh, I will show you my final bit that was a little bit of a failure, but I was really excited until I did it wrong. But I tried to become part of Cool Handle Gang. Uh, I had seen someone post a picture of their Millsbo with these handles on it, and they're so pretty. I was so excited. They would have looked so nice, but I somehow ordered the wrong size. So mistakes were made. Be smarter than me when you're ordering accessories. Um, it doesn't fit on either Millsbo. I'm really sad. Eventually, I'll order myself some new ones, but so pretty. They come in a few colors also, but I like this brass color. Okay, so I will take you guys uh, for a little journey through the Mills Bows really quick. Okay, if you guys have ever watched my first video, you know the drill. I do not have a steady hand, but I will do my best. Um, so this cabinet here is mostly anthuriums. Like I mentioned, I'm trying to kind of create a living room space where I can have a bunch of these up. Anthuriums are just like my favorite at my absolute favorite. I think there is something so picturesque about the veining on them. They're so beautiful. Um, so that is why I have such a gang of anthuriums in here. Uh, and they're all kind of different sizes. Like here, we've got a big crystallinium. Uh, we've got tons of baby crystalliniums, some uh, baby forgetii, uh, some, some of my favorites up here. Ooh, and a new baby leaf. We love that. Uh, the ace of spades, I've got a couple of those. Um, just some more crystalliniums, some different varieties of crystalliniums, uh, some clarinerviums. Honestly, so many different types. I just, I love them all. Um, alocasia, I also love alocasias. Uh, whenever I find a little bulb, um, maybe you've seen my alocasia bulb hunting video in the past, uh, I will link that down below also. I love hunting for those little bulbs and growing new babies from them. So. I definitely have a few of those in my greenhouses also. Some really wee baby little anthuriums where they're just teeny, teeny, tiny growing. So I uh, got that as well. Uh, love my tricolor. So gorgeous and doing incredible in here. There you can see my fan at the back. I've turned it down for the purposes of this video and you'll see my humidity is decreasing. It was at 83, but now that the door is open, and he grew a baby shoot. He was so happy. So the tricolor loves it in here. I also have some Amedrium silver. So a few of those, uh, another baby over here of that as well. What do we have down here? A little tiny baby uh, Melanochrysum. Yeah, basically in here, it's mostly 
uh, anthuriums, and then a few babies, like some Cebu blues, stuff like that, where I'm just trying to uh, grow out a few more strands to thicken up some other plants and grow a few little babies here and there. Basically anyone who uh, fits and looks cute. Ooh, another guy who I've hauled out here. So this is a baby Splendid. Same thing. Um, my I used to have Splendids growing in my greenhouse. It got so big that I just chopped it up into a bunch of little pieces to make little babies. And I am way happier. Again, I way prefer starting things a little bit smaller. And then when I find the perfect cutting, I'll grow that one up. So this one's looking pretty nice. Uh, I've got like, I think four little babies like this, so I'll pick the best one and I guess I'll get rid of the rest. But that is like one of my favorite leaf colors. A new splendid leaf is just so gorgeous. I always take advantage of the space on the top, on the sides. I always try and grow stuff off of them. Got a big one over there. But uh, over here, I've got a uh, mandula that I've got staked up and some cacti. This guy is super cute. I babysat my neighbor's plants back at the apartment and she crocheted this for me as a thank you. And it's just the cutest. Uh, I love anthurium, so it lives in here. Uh, I've got some of the snakes in here, uh, more cacti growing up, loving the light. Uh, I love to use mirrors. So excuse me for my mess back there, but I find that in planted spaces, mirrors are so awesome because they reflect other plants. So go mirrors, you can see my snake back there also, and my uh, other grow light from the previous video. Such a nice warm light to it, so love that. Okay, so now for the tall mills bow. Uh, there's those grow lights again. They're just so awesome. They look so nice and slick, and they really do give the plants like a very natural coloring to them all. It looks really, really good in here now. So um, I will kind of show you what I've got going on in here right now, uh, Hoyas, 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 Hoyas. These are all, uh, these are just some of them. I've even sold some more. There's another one over here. The Silver Lacunosa. I got a cutting about a year and a half ago that was three leaves. <laughs> and this is what it has become. It's insane. Um, so I'm still trying to beef this up. I want to basically in the end, combine a few of these into a beautiful hanging pot for the living room someday, but uh, while they're in here, they're just uh, growing and beefing up. So they look fantastic. A regular Lacunosa. The silver is so cool because some of them are more splashy than others. So uh, if, by the way, if you see any debris on these plants, it is from beneficial bugs. They come on like a powder stuff that you kind of dust all over the place. But yeah, so some of them are like super silver where there's like barely any splashes of like darkness to them. And then some of them are like super, super splashy, all from the same three leaf cutting. And yeah, they just continue to grow as they were. And this one is so happy with the new grow lights that it's actually flowering for me. Hopefully that pops soon. I deserve this. I love these silvers so much and all I want is a flower out of one. <gasps> He's flowering too. Look at this. Everybody's so happy. So yeah, the plants are doing great. Um, in my jewel orchid casing here, I have switched out a lot of the jewels because they were overgrowing. They were getting so big. So I've both given them haircuts and switched them out for different jewels. I keep a lot of them in my living room now. Um, but yeah, they also grow up like little sprouts at the back that you can actually prune out and uh, regrow elsewhere. So I've been doing that and I've got baby jewel orchids all over the place. More alocasia. Here, uh, for anyone wondering, there's like a super baby from one of those little alocasia bulbs. There's a maharani. So cute when they're just like a single little baby leaf. There's a variegated alocasia. And same thing, he just put up from a little bulb at the bottom too. I've got another baby Milano in here. Uh, the fish, a baby fishtail in here. My mother fishtails uh, for the silver and the regular both live downstairs in the grow house. More little babies. Here's a little baby silver fishtail. Super cute. Uh, more Hoya babies, same thing. Anyone who needs a little bit of extra love to help boost the growth kind of gets to come up and live the cushy life. And the bottom right now, I'm not gonna show you the bottom because it's a bit of a rehab for stuff like this. So this was my original Splendid and this is what I chopped up. like. You can see there, it was growing up, 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 had grown way past this, and I chopped it into, I believe, four or five pieces, uh, rooted them all, 
with their original leaves and now it's regrowing off of the little stump so he's starting fresh but I find that I had let it go without uh, extending it a little bit too long then the leaves weren't the right size and I do really want like a staked up beautiful big splendid like Craig Miller Randall has but uh it's got to be the perfect one and I made the mistake of not letting this one be the perfect one so that's what's going on downstairs in here right now um another quick run through of the greenhouse I still have the fans going I keep at least one per level those are still my original fans from day one they are like holding out um I in the basement I use the Vornados uh, for my larger grow tent they're fantastic can't say enough good things about the Vornados apart from the, that they are so large they take up quite a big uh, footprint but this one honestly also does too just because the actual fan on this one is so big so uh, either or they're both great I just keep the Vornados downstairs because they push so much more air that it's better for the big tall grow tent I still have my weatherproofing on this greenhouse I use two different types of weatherproofing um, so I use this kind of rubbery black one on the edge and I've kept that on the side and the top I removed it from the bottom it was just holding good enough humidity anyways I previously had every single side of the door taped off so here is the weatherproofing that I use on the door only and it's only on one side of the door also um, this just works great it's like a little flap so when you close the two doors there we go you can see that it's sealed off and that works phenomenally and final piece is I still love and utilize the sides of these greenhouses so you can see there's grow light there's plant it's getting light from those grow lights so anything that you pop on the side will also grow well and I've also got a string of hearts over there hanging off that edge um, really anything kind of hanging off the edges that's fantastic all right back on the floor so of course as always if you guys have any questions about the grow lights about plants about really anything definitely leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer those also I'll be leaving uh, anything that I talked about linked down below as well uh, I have my Amazon link there if you click that I have shops for the Canada <laughs> the Canada I have shops for Canada and the USA so you can click there and uh, shop the inside of my greenhouse apart from of course the Ikea stuff I also have a ton of other stuff linked in those Amazon shops like um, handy little watering tools and uh, label makers all that so definitely check those out there's some helpful stuff in there and as always thank you guys again so so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye you guys